portrait of Mary MacKillop in A4 piece of white paper, a rubber and a pencil. We're going to start with the top of her head, which is the top of the habit. We're actually not showing which is the part that sits actually on the forehead. So it actually sits quite low to the eyebrows. It's a slight curve going around the top. Then we draw two lines coming down on either side and curving around down to the chin. Now the, these habits, the white part that we see, are actually quite tight to the woman's face. So this is we're drawing the face really just as if we could just trace around our own face and then come across our forehead. So this where we actually placement of the rest of our eyes and everything is a little bit different to how we normally do it. Remembering our eyes are like the shape of a football, a bit pinched at either side, one on the left and one on the right, and drawing in the iris and the pupil, the iris being the coloured part of the eye, and the pupil being that black little dot. Now the iris, you don't see any white at the top of the iris in a human eye, so you need to make sure those circles touch the top of the eyelid and the bottom of the eye. Now that's where the top of the head will be. So those eyes are actually in the middle of the head as we would normally draw them, but we are actually first drawing where that habit is. That's why our eyes look like they're quite close to the top of the head. Just adding in some eyelashes and a bit of that dimension to show those eyelids. And then we will do the eyebrows. Just a really light idea of where the eyebrows hit. I'm drawing them in pretty much like little furry hair bits because that's what our eyebrows are. And the nose. Now this today we're just doing a, bit, a sort of a simple nose. One that has a little bit of dimension of coming around that main part of the nose, a little bit of the nostril, which is just a, like a really fine upside down C, and then a C that cups on either side of that underneath C that you've just done. You can sort of fix that up a little bit, and it's not amazing. But with a bit of just playing around with it, a bit of definition, and hopefully when we colour it, it'll look a little bit better. Now the mouth. Now Mary McKillop, you don't usually see her with a big cheesy smile so I'm just going to do it a pretty straight mouth but with the ends of the lips curved up just to make her look pleasant and happy. That line is the middle of the lip and then I'm drawing the bottom of the lip and then the top which is like two little hills in the middle of where the nose sort of is, just where that main part of the nose is, where those two little hills are. Okay, so the face is pretty much done. Just um, not happy with the side of that face over there. Luckily, I'm just sketching, I can play around with that. All right, now we need to do the brown part of her headpiece. Now that sort of sits about a centimeter or two above the white of the habit. I'm going to follow that same line but just extending it a little bit further. I'm going to bring it down but it comes out a bit. This is a piece of brown cloth that hangs sort of loosely around the women's face. The white part is quite fitted where the brown part is a lot more, a lot looser. So I just want to show that bit of looseness by adding those curves and a bit of a kink where it's hit because it's a fabric. And then curving out over the shoulder. Now I just want to give a bit of definition. So we're going to add in that white, finish off that white part of her habit, which is the tight part over her head. Straight line coming down and just slightly curving out to the edge of the brown cloth, just so that we can actually see that definition of where her head and her neck would be. Because we don't know actually going to be drawing in a neck. All of that's inside her clothing. She's all covered up. So the top, going to take it a little bit above the top, not too high. Just probably about two, three centimetres above that line we just drew. Curving it around, flicking it out to the side. This doesn't matter exactly where, but you want to bring it down a bit because you want to have that cloth look like it's coming down towards the shoulders and then going up over the shoulders. Just add, of course this is a piece of cloth, 
we want to make it look like it's not perfectly sits in all our clothing crinkles from time to time when we move when it's on us it's never perfect just drawing in a crease line coming all the way across just to give a little bit of dimension now I'll work on this when I actually color in and I'll make it look a little bit different in color so we can see that bit of a crease going on okay fixing up the eyes a bit Adding a little bit of eyebrows, eyelashes, fixing those up a little bit, just a little bit more depth, a little bit on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to do the, uh, the bottom of the habit, which is this white curve that sits over the top of their brown um, cloth. So it's a curve that sits down around around their chest so I'm just going to draw that curve in to where that white piece of fabric actually stops and the brown dress continues underneath it so that's a white head piece that they put on there it's quite firm to the head and then sits over their shoulders and just down to their chest so there she is with her white habit and her habit on Oh, Mary Kate was a um, Josephine's nun, so she had this symbol that they you will notice on pretty much any artwork that shows Mary Mikkel. So we're going to draw one of those in. Basically, I'm drawing one straight line from the end of the white down to the end of the page, and I'm making it about the same width as that white habit. So it's not too wide, two straight lines, find a middle point in between. And draw two diagonal lines and drawing two diagonal lines going up to the same middle point and there we go and we have the symbol that we always see Mary McKillop wearing on her dress just gonna make it a bit thicker because it's a, a ribbon type symbol usually a bit thicker than just a thin line so I'm just doing an extra line tracing about one centimeter thick line on either side of the lines already made and there you go she's pretty much done and ready to color I'm going to color mine in watercolors here I've got some from home they're a little bit messy because the kids had a really good go at them but I do like these ones I've got my tissue for cleaning my brush I have my paint brushes, these ones have a little water inside, so, but I do have a cup of water if I need to. I'm going to start with knowing that there's two colours, two main colours, the white and the brown and the black in the middle. It's going to be a bit of blue that goes on the symbol down the bottom. We're at some brown paint. I'll start painting the outside. I have it. I'm not going to actually put any paint at all on that white bit. It's going to stay without any paint. So paper is already white. Notice how I am colouring in, but doing the outline first and then colouring in. There we go. All my brown's done. Now I'm painting this section in black. I'm doing that because this is seen underneath, it's like the shadow, it's under or behind the cloth. And now the blue for the symbol down the bottom. This watercolour hangs a bit too watery for my liking, but sometimes we just do what we can. You may notice I've got a couple of other tonal details. I've just done a little bit of dark black in certain sections to give a bit of an outline in certain areas. Alright, time for the face, the eyes. Mary McKillop, they seem nicely with the nice, beautiful blue eyes. I'm going to paint the skin. And so I've finished the painting of the skin and the eyes. I need to come back over. I couldn't get this with uh, watercolor, so I'm coming over with a pencil. This is where you can add those, you know, just different mediums 
to your artwork to give you a little bit more extra detail. So this is just a black pencil that I've gone traced around the eye, traced around where I've had my pencil, giving a bit more definition to the eyebrows, eyelashes. I'm using a brown here for the nose, purely because I don't want it to be bold and stand out. It needs to be sort of similar to the colour of the face. I don't mention to your eyes where you get a bit of sunkenness and all of us have that shadowing and then the eyebrows and then a little bit more of that you know, sort of look there our hairs that come out and keep that colouring it in looking pretty good lips all right I think she did a really beautiful soft pink because then I don't want her to look like she's wearing lipstick but I'm just going to give a little bit of definition with a really a light red and add a bit of colour just enough just to bring her out a little bit more to what it was different to the skin colour there we go she's looking I'm outline with a black sharpie some parts of this now I wasn't a big fan of the black sharpie but once you sort of start make a big mistake you've got to fix it and make it work so I'm going to fry it a bit with the sharpie and a little bit of damage to my texture and then make some of this she looks pretty good I think so here you go guys have a go see if you can do your own Mary McKillop portrait at home now if you want you can add a coloured background Enjoy.